And welcome back to Carmi Cast. I'm your host, Denton Weiss. As always, I've got Skylar Anderton on the board. Today, we're going to be talking about the Farm to Table event that is raising money for the White County FFA. So in studio, I've got Corey Sutton, NCOE FFA advisor, as well as Patrick Skates and Melinda Nelson. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, let's see. Farm to Table event. That is going to be next Thursday? Thursday. What's the date? October 7th. October 7th. And what time does it start? Social hour begins at 5.30 and dinner at 6.30. Social hour, 5.30, dinner at 6, six o'clock. Is that right? Yeah, so I've got uh, Melinda Nelson and Patrick Skates in here. Uh, they are here to talk about the Farm to Table event. On the end over here, we got Corey Sutton. So this event is raising money for the White County FFA. So they twisted his arm to come in. So if he passes out, uh, somebody may need to get a gurney in here because I don't know if we could get you out. Um, so planning any event is um, it's a lot of work. Um, like next week, I've got a party of 65 coming in on Tuesday night, and I'm a nervous wreck about it. So where do you start planning something like this? Whose idea was it, I guess? Because this is the second time. Last year, we didn't have one because of COVID, I would assume. year before was the first year for it. And as far as I know, it was turned out to be a pretty good success, wasn't it? Yeah, we, we, had, a, we had a great event. And after the uh, 2019 event, a lot of people were coming up to us saying, hey, we hope you make this an annual event. Uh it, it came from uh, social media. I was on uh, social media back in early 2019, uh, and a friend of mine uh, had posted where they had done it. It was a small town up by Peoria. Uh, they had done a similar event, and I was like, hey, that's something, you know, we could do here in Carmi and, and do it around Corn Day. And, you know, a lot of people are coming in town for that weekend, so we thought it would be a, a nice event to put together to celebrate agriculture and ag businesses and then hopefully raise money for something agriculture based you know 2019 we raised money for 4-h uh, and then this year decided to do it for uh, white county ffa clubs um, but uh, but yeah it turned out really nice and um, obviously 2020 we had covid and, and was not able to have it and uh, we started talking this spring if we were going to do it again and, and decided to move forward with it how'd you recruit her uh, she was the first person I called. I said, Melinda, I'm, you should feel I'm, privileged. He was, he was on vacation and he said, Hey, I have this great idea. Yeah. And so he tells me and he said, okay, let me know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, Melinda was very quick, uh, to say yes, uh, that, uh, that her and PMB would, um, help put this event on. And, and, um, and like I said, it takes a lot of work, uh, we meet numerous times uh, throughout the year just to kind of talk through how we want to do things, what we're going to do different. Um, now, is but, it just you two put, doing all this? Actually, it's a group a group of us, Patrick and Tim and Bethany Skates, yeah. as well as Jill Fowler with People's National Bank. Okay. So I didn't get to go to the first year. My wife was there. Um, you actually catered the social hour. Yeah, of it. I remember coming home and saying <laughs> everything went smooth until right at the very end it came a downpour. So let's hope it doesn't rain on you this year. If it does, we hope it's towards the end. But um, so where's it located at? It's on uh, Main uh, Main Cross oh, South Street, Street uh, which is uh, by the castle, catty corner from uh, the uh, city hall. Uh, and so they, the city, uh, was able to. Uh, they give us permission to shut down the street. We start decorating uh, Thursday morning and setting up the tables and all the banners and everything. And then, um, yeah, so it, we just set it set up. A, the first year we set up a single table right down the center of the street. Um, we've had a good enough response that we need to set up two tables. So we're going to do two tables down the middle um, to accommodate. The, and we want to spread people out a little more this year. So yeah. um, we also... Um, uh, have the, uh, 
I guess before a home game, uh, the parents feed the players um, of the football team, Carmi football team, ahead of time. And so uh, they reached out and wanted to know if they could be a part of this. And so uh, we're going to feed the the football team uh, on that Thursday night as well. Uh, Big eaters, I'm sure. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Uh, so social hour, what takes place during social hour from 5.30 to 6? So we found that social hour is one of the – great highlights of the event you know a lot of people coming back for corn days as Patrick had stated and they like to come and kind of mingle and things of that nature where um this year the Elks is helping assist us with that so we're going to have our um the social hour part will actually be held in the veterans park there it's a great setting there for us just to kind of kind of mingle and get together for those that have been away for a while kind of oh yeah and your wife does a great job with catering all the food so it's so it's fun. Yeah, I don't know why I wasn't there the first. I'm sure I had to work, but I remember her getting all the stuff prepped and ready for it. <laughs> she doesn't get as nervous as I do about stuff like that. She just doesn't care, I guess, but it always turns out good. Um, corn day weekend's a good day to, or a good time to have it. I've always noticed every year um, at the restaurant, I'll get phone calls of people wanting to schedule class reunions on corn day weekend, and I think a lot of it's because if you if you live outside of Carmine, you're going to come back to Carmine. You're wanting to see everybody when you get here. That's the best weekend to do it because it seems like everybody comes home that weekend. And uh, I think you'll have a bigger one this year just because there was there wasn't a corn day last year. There wasn't hardly anything last year, and I think people are ready to get out. And uh, a lot of them probably haven't seen their friends in a couple of years. So right. and and as Patrick had stated earlier, we had had people reach out to us this early spring wondering like when things were starting to look like they were going to open up, hey, please tell us you're going to have this event again this year. <laughs> so it was nice. It's just something a little different, you know, yeah. that, like I said, having it out in the middle of the street and um, in the, with the castle uh, house there and the Webb Hay House and the Veterans Memorial Park. It's just it's a really neat area to have it Yeah, as it's well. definitely a good setting yep. for sure. Um, dinner starts at 6. 6.30. 6.30. Um can you tell us what we're having yet, or is that a secret? So it's a little bit of a secret, but we're very thankful for local businesses that help us provide. A true farm-to-table is, you know, one more, of course, during harvest season. However, we wanted to kind of bring this one to the community a little bit more during, like, the true harvest time but, and be able to utilize, because we have a lot of great businesses here in town as well, so we would like to be able to do them, as well as Corey's sister has a new a new restaurant in North City Cornerstone Cafe and. So it's kind of nice for us to be able to showcase, you know, Little Giants does a lot of great catering. Yesterday's does a lot of great catering. Gotsy's is a great resource for your catering needs as well. So we like to kind of showcase on those. Are we uh, selling tickets to this or is this? Um... We are selling tickets to this event, yes. It's limited seating. So we've already had a lot of, you know, a lot of tickets have already been sold for the event. So we're hopeful that. Is there any those left? Are, there are some left, yes. How do people purchase tickets if they're listening and want to go? So per- tickets may be purchased at Skates Valley or at People's National Bank. Skates Valley or People's, right here in Carmi. Yes. And we also have a Facebook uh, okay. invite out there that people have reached out on that and commented. And, you know, we realize there's a lot of people that are out of town going to be coming in, coming in that weekend. So we just write down their name and... And, you know, trust that people are going to show up that night and buy their tickets. So right. um, we've had a lot of people do that. How many tickets are we selling? 300. Oh, man, that'd be awesome. You sold all those. It'd be a big group. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we uh, so we did some counting this morning, and we, we've already sold more tickets than we had people in uh, 2019. It, are you I getting s- nervous? No, we're excited. <laughs> <laughs> Only nervous about the weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a great setting, as well as we should have mentioned, too, that John Deere does a great job for us, too, is providing wonderful backdrop to kind of help secure this city. So it's this street's there, so it's kind of blocked off by the by their tractors and things of that nature. So it's it's nice. Yeah, even a better setting for harvest time, a bunch of tractors sitting yes. around. What would all the big city people think of us? They'd just drive by think we're nuts, wouldn't they? <laughs> they probably already do anyway. <laughs> yeah, you're probably my, right. My uncle actually sits on the Wine Board Association for Illinois. and Wine Board? 
Mm-hmm. And I so, didn't even know there was such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is where the wine association and Patrick and Tim had managed to ca- capture some great shots. And in fact, some some of them, like he had shared with you know some of his fellow members up in Northern Illinois, and it was it was a success. Yep, so it was really well. So Patrick, who do you, who you got standing behind you here? I have uh, Thomas and Henry. Uh, they're my twin eleven year old boys. You guys do look alike. Identical twins, obviously. Couldn't even, couldn't even tell they were twins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they haven't made a peep. Matter of fact, there's a third person in this room. They probably can't see you on camera, but... Uh, you Corey's got, see him poking yeah, over. Corey's got his boy in here with us, too. If my kids were in here, we would have already had to take several breaks. The camera would have already been thrown. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It would have been. <laughs> I, I'll tell a quick story. Um, last night, I had to take... Finley to dance class at Tumble Time. 5.30? Yes, from 5.30 to 6. Abby had to work, so Huck comes with me. And uh, we park in the bank parking lot right next to the new playground that, that we love White County put up. He wanted to play in the in the, in the the park, he calls it. I said, well, let's get Finley to dance. We'll come back here out here and play in the park. I'm like, all right. So we get her in there. We come back out there. He starts playing. So I go sit in a little shaded area get my phone out and farting around on my phone and I happen to look up and he's standing right by the gate with his pants down his ankles, just peeing right into the gravel. <laughs> so sounds about right. Yeah. That's my kids. Yeah. So, uh, in 2019, um, you guys, when you did the farm to table event, the money was raised for four H. So this time we have chose FFA to, to raise the money for, which is why we brought, uh, Corey Sutton in, um, Corey, for those who don't know, what does FFA even stand for? Well, it's actually changed a little bit. When it first started, it was Future Farmers of America, but they didn't want to really um, limit the people from the inner cities and stuff. So now it's just just the, the letters that stand. Um, it is all about agricultural education and, and teaching the kids to get out there and basically basically prepare them for their future careers. So you teach at NCOE, and it sounds like you do a, a multitude of things, a little bit of woodworking, which is more like you, like we were talking earlier, constructing picnic tables or uh, we're not making jewelry boxes. No. more. It's more of, you know, real-life stuff as far as how to build, get in construction, build houses, you know, teach them what framing is, teach them electrical. We try to teach them stuff that, you know, they can actually use in their future that way they're not having to pay somebody $90 to come in and change a light switch. That's right. Uh, if you run out of things to give them to do, I've got a bathroom that needs rough, roughed in. Just send them out there. <laughs> I've already got the wood. Um, so um, I guess you're what they call an FFA advisor. Um, so you just handle the NCOE kids, and then Carmi's got their own advisor, and, of course, Grayville's got their own. Correct. Um, I've seen Corey at Dairy Day. Did you see his display? I did, which we're gonna cool. we're gonna pull this up. Can you pull up the uh, before picture? So we're walking along the street at Dairy Day, and I, I look over to the left, and there's this. For those of you who don't know what a, I always called him a grain cart. Uh, I guess you could call it a. It's actually a gravity wagon. A gravity wagon. Um, but if you if for those of you who don't know what the inside of these things look like, that it's all it's all sloped down so that when there's grain in it. All the grain automatically falls to the bottom, and then there's a wheel on the opposite side of this wagon that you open up, and the, the grain would come out. Um, matter of fact, I don't know why this just popped in my head. When I was growing up, we went in, my, my dad had two sheds, and we went, out, we went to the one shed that just we don't go in that often, and we heard the faintest meowing noise. I'm like, what is that? Dad's like, it sounds like a cat. <laughs> well, somehow a cat had gotten in that thing and couldn't get back out. We don't know how long it was in there, but when we opened that thing up, it just rolled out. So we got it a bunch of water and fed it, but it, it pulled through. But anyway, um, was this your idea to turn this into this game, or had you did someone else think of this? Well, I thought it was genius. Well, kind of like Patrick said, you know, social media plays a big role in things. So this has been kind of a popular thing at pumpkin patches and stuff like that. Uh, we've had – couple people bring it up in our alumni meetings and that it would be a fun idea to do. Uh, this year we just – we had a, a student that graduated last year that actually passed away in a car accident this summer. 
and we really wanted to do something that would, you know, honor him. And he actually was a three-point shooter for uh, champion for the uh, state basketball. And so he was called the king of the hill. It's a country company's or country financial term. And so he won that as a, as a freshman. And so we really wanted to show his passion for basketball. He was an FA member. He was a great kid. So we just said, hey, let's just make something for him. Everything that we raise, we'll send back to his family, and they can put it to the scholarship. Or, That's correct. Um, we don't really know exactly. They talked about maybe even making a, a FA scholarship in his name with it. Uh, but we, we just took the – the wagon and it was pretty rough shape, but Jason Pruitt, I mean, he, uh, CJ worked for him and he was really close with him and he donated the wagon for us. And I mean, it wasn't terrible shape, but looks good now, but we put a lot of work into it. We had a lot of classes. Um, they all jumped in. They all did a great job. Uh, Troy Dagley helped with the uh, sandblasting. We had a uh, Reister body shop. They provided the paint, the booth, uh, Justin's son, he's a senior this year. He actually spent five hours, I think, painting on it one night. So we we sanded on it, we painted it, we put decals from Tim Buskirk on there, and the kids and the community really seemed to enjoy it. So, yeah, you always see at fairs and festivals and stuff the the basketball game, and they've got a big net there, and it all funnels towards it. But when I seen this, I was like, that's genius. As long as you have the cart, if the if the ball makes it in the cart. It's going to end up in the bottom of it. And then all you guys had to do was uh, get it looking nice and then just add the, the the goals with the backdrop to keep the ball from bouncing out and then build a return on the bottom for the balls to come out. And I just, I don't know, I thought it was a pretty cool idea. Well, we're working on, we're going to take it again to Mule Days this weekend and we are putting a net around it because we did have some balls flying around and <laughs> <laughs> we want to make sure everybody's safe, but. Well, I'm sure you had a couple of hot rods wanting to shoot from way out there, too. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys did a good job. Um, so, I told you earlier I was going to ask you, so what are some other things that FFA has done in the past to, to, I guess, raise money for FFA? Well, right now we're actually, we have a two gun raffles and a 50-50 going. Uh, it's been going since right before Dairy Days. We will draw the last night of Mule Days for a winner. Uh, that's kind of our main fundraiser that helps pay for hotels and stuff when we go to National Convention next month. Uh, later on in the year, we'll do a strawberry sales. Uh, that was canceled completely last year, which I know a lot of community members were really upset about, but hopefully we get back on that. That was going to be my next question was, did the last year kind of mess you up on fundraising, which obviously it did. It did a little bit, but honestly, it hurt us more on contest and getting to go do stuff. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get to do an end-of-the-year trip. Uh, we try to encourage kids, get out there, do things. We we have points. If they meet a certain point level, we give them a, a trip. Uh, basically, we want to make sure these kids are enjoying themselves, that type of things. So. Yeah. Well, let's stop there, take a quick break, hear from HD Bean Jewelers, and we will be right back. When it comes to engagement rings, the first thing that probably comes to mind is expensive. And why wouldn't it? Three months wages on a ring? That's crazy. And let's be honest, you know nothing about diamonds. It's all intimidating. I'm Cody Gottman, owner of HD Bean Jewelers, and I want to change how you feel about buying that engagement ring. I stock in-style engagement rings that are at a great price, and we put the extra effort in to help you understand what you're buying. We even offer service after the sale, sizing, a lifetime warranty, and a convenient cleaning plan that can't be beat. Thinking about a custom engagement ring? We can handle that. All our custom rings are built start to finish in-house, and you get to work with a professional jeweler, not some salesperson. If you're ready for a new way to buy an engagement ring, stop by our showroom, downtown Carmi, or give me a call, 618-382-8170. I can't wait to be your jeweler. And thanks to Cody Gottman for that sponsorship. We appreciate that very much. Without our sponsors, uh, we wouldn't be wouldn't be able to do this. So we thank him for that. Um, so I'm assuming this event has got sponsors that we had to, to drum up. Is there anybody you want to mention? It, it does. We kind of 
We came up with some kind of fun sponsor names related to the ag, but our top sponsors are called the Bin Buster this year. So we would really like to thank Novus Ag and Slays for their generous donations as well as we've been very blessed with community support and we'll be showing sponsorships for those throughout the event as well. Yeah, they, um, Patrick said you guys are going to have banners and stuff up. It's got the sponsors on it. Mm-hmm. Um, who was it was just talking? Uh, maybe it was we had Clint Taylor in here. And he said one thing, because he, he wasn't a Carmine native, he said one thing I've noticed about Carmine is not only are people um, um, real generous with monetary donations, but they're really generous with their time. And when it comes to stuff like this, people just write you a check and show up and help. So Dude. another good thing about living in a small town. Uh, so what's the whole purpose of doing this? I mean, I know it's to raise money, but is there any underlying themes here why we're doing an event like this? That's what Melinda and I talked about in 2019 was um, it, wanting to make it a community event. We wanted to, you know, like I said, raise money for something. Um, but the whole the whole idea is more to bring the community closer. Uh, everybody's guilty of getting in their own, uh, you know, box of going to just their own church events or their club events or whatever it may be. Um, and so you, you, you know, since it's one long table set up down the street, you may get seat, seated next to somebody that you might normally never talk to, um, and walked right past them in the grocery store. And now, um, that since you've got seated with them, uh, you may, you know, say, Hey, hey we're sitting next to you at the yeah. farm to table dinner and strike up a conversation. So as divided as everybody is in this country and, you know, it, hopefully this event kind of just, uh, bring some people together to, Hey, we sat next to each other and had a nice conversation over dinner uh, at the farm to table dinner. And if that, if that helps um, kind of bridge some of these divides that we have, we're all about it. So that's one of the reasons you guys are setting the table up as like a big, long shotgun style table. Because yep. we are Smart. a community at the end of the day. You know, we are all a team. That's right. You guys going to this? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they bailed on me for, uh, was it Lake Rudolph? Yeah. yeah, they're going camping for the weekend at Lake Oh, Rudolph. that'll be fun. Wait a minute. Where's Lake Rudolph? Over by uh, Holiday Bay. World. Okay. You going to hit Holiday World on your way back? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> Too old for Holiday World? I don't like rides. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. Um, so, Kerner Distributing yes. uh, donated the beer They've for been this? They've very Beers? gracious. Yes, beer and wine. Yeah, it's supposed to, I believe it's Illinois wine and then some craft beers from people in Illinois is what I've understood, so. It's a surprise. You should have to find out when they get there, huh? Yes. <laughs> uh, so, again, they can get tickets um, either at People's National Bank, Skates Valley, um, hit them up on Facebook, uh, and I forgot to mention the price earlier, which we were going to bring that up. So, if if they just want to come to the dinner only, it's $30. And if they want to be here for the social hour as well as the dinner, it's 40 per person. Is that correct? Correct. I think it'll be fun. Matter of fact, I might be able to make it to this year's. So We've had a lot of it, great response in regards to it. So I may, uh, to I'll have to ask Abby. I may have to. She may have already got tickets. I don't know, though. If she did, she didn't ask me. So we'll have to run by people's and grab some. But And, our, and like you said, the other purpose behind this is uh, it's – we, we want to celebrate agriculture, farmers, and, and agribusinesses, agribusinesses in our communities. Um, and like I said, in 2019, we raised the money for 4-H, which, you know, that had a big impact on me growing up. Um, and I know every, you know, farm kid out there, it did. Same way with FFA. Um, there's a lot of things that um, still today that I remember my FFA advisor telling me that I'll use it and I'm thinking he's crazy and I really do use it today. Public yeah. speaking, we just talk, were talking about that on break. Um, public speaking was one of those things that I thought I'll never have to do and I do it more now than I ever thought I would. So uh, if raising money for those types of clubs um, helps them, you know, maybe send a kid to uh, the national convention or state convention that might not normally be able to go or as Melinda was saying, you know, a kid that may not be able to buy an FFA jacket, uh, if this money can go towards that stuff, we're all about it. Yeah, I don't know what these small communities would do without agriculture because, well, aren't you a farmer? Yep, or, yep, we or, farm. Yeah, yep. so everybody knows a farmer around here, that's for sure. Well, I think it's going to be a fun event. I hope to make it. Uh, is there anything else anybody wants to cover before we sign off or do we hit all the points? 
Patrick and I would like to really thank Corey for being a part of this today. Thank you so much, Corey, for coming to. Absolutely. When he walked in, he said, uh, this isn't going to be a video podcast, right? And (laughs) I only have two hands and four cameras, so I couldn't hide them all real quick, but you did fine. Well, to be honest, I didn't even know what a podcast was, so I'm, I'm not right I don't up on time. So. <laughs> we don't know and what they are either. So we don't know what we're, we're doing either. And his sisters both asked, how did you get him to do this? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thanks for coming in. Um, for those at home listening, don't forget, uh, Farm to Table event will be October 7th. That's a Thursday night. Social hour is at 530. Dinner is at 630. Get your tickets at People's National Bank here in Carmi or on Facebook or Skates Valley. Uh, Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next week.